Hey, I'm John Bolger with Premier Guitar. We are at the Bridgestone, and I'm with Joel Hofstra of Trans Siberian. Joel, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you so much for having me, man. Yeah, I appreciate man, I it. Love your work, love been following your stuff online, and of course, White Snake, Share, Night Ranger, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you know my resume. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Well, I think most, I think most of these people probably do. So this actually, this gig's got to be perfect because most other gigs slow down during the winter, and you just segue right into this. Yeah, it's really been something for me to base my year around. It's it's consistent. Yeah. Uh, and the guys I work with, I really love. We got great band members, Chris Caffrey. You're oh, going to yeah. interview shortly, great right over here. Great guitar soon. Great guitar uh, player. Great, great guitar partner for me. Couldn't have a better partner in crime and. Uh, yeah, I just I really enjoy it. It's it's kind of become the way I do the holidays. I yeah. wouldn't know what to do without the gig, and, yeah. and so I'm certainly honored to be here. How long have you been doing this gig? Uh, this is year number ten for me. Wow, that's yeah, great. it's amazing. Yeah, great run, and you've been uh, you've been playing Les Pauls. I usually see you on Les Pauls, right? Yeah, so the philosophy, the way things started with Trans Siberian Orchestra was the classic guitar shape because of Al Petrelli was really the, the founding guitar player, mm -hmm. music director of the group. And yeah. It was kind of the black Les Paul. And then sure. eventually white became okay and acceptable. <laughs> and as things have grown uh, and the production has grown, uh, the philosophy has shifted a bit, and I kind of go also with like this is a visual circus. You can the people can't see necessarily on YouTube, but obviously uh, it's just an amazing spectacle of a yeah. show to see. So uh, we've kind of evolved into that, where a lot of the guitars are quite frankly just eye candy for a lot of the people. Yeah. I could probably do the gig on how many tunings do we have, Galen? This is my, my amazing guitar technician, Galen Henson, back there. He says two tunings that we're in, I think, for the show. But I could probably do the show on just a few guitars, but why not do it on, like, I don't know, how many How many are we using? We've got uh, a dozen guitars. Out. Twelve guitars on those. Right. So, and a, it's, a lot of it is, quite frankly, just for fun. Yeah, it's a uh, lot but of string changes. Number yeah. one is still, of course, the classic Trans-Siberian Orchestra, White Les Paul, another custom. And uh, this is probably the second favorite guitar that I own. My favorite is my R7 Gold Top that sure. uh, has been around the world with me and that I've really bonded with. And that is not in this show for some reason. I don't know why. I've never used it. That Gold was is such a Christmas color too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think at the time when I started with this, that was my guitar with Night Ranger, yeah. and I wanted some separation. Sure. I wanted to use different guitars for different gigs, yeah. and I've always been that way. Like with White Snake, I have my own guitars for that. So anyway, this would be the number one, uh, and I guess we, we could just kind of walk down the, yeah, the, yeah, the line in terms of what's readily available yeah, sure. to us. Um, I'm starting the show on this this year. Just oh, wow. uh, uh, the, the new custom Firebird, obviously, from Gibson. Very uh, cool. Not much to be said about it. It's a little bit, I would say, uh, spongier sounding than a Les Paul, but it's got a really nice, beautiful, probably the closest guitar uh, sounding guitar to a Les Paul that I have in this particular collection. Yeah. And obviously, visually, it's really cool and nice to look at. And sure. I, so again, I could probably play the Les Paul, but why not just have a little variety for yeah. people? And it fits in with the TSO. Uh, black or white sure, philosophy. Sure, yeah, and the ebony figureboard, that's just beautiful. Um, next up, a few years ago, this came into the picture with, uh, from courtesy of Dave Friedman. I don't know sure. if you guys know Friedman, mainly well, known course. for amplifiers, but yeah. Dave actually makes a mean guitar. I didn't know how good it was going to be until I got it, quite frankly. Right. Uh, I had played a couple of his guitars at NAMM, but this is a gem. He plays, uh, makes really fantastic sounding guitars. Um, and this actually people ask me about. Our bass player, uh, David Z, passed away a couple years ago in a tragic accident. And I just mm. have his funeral card on there as a little bit of a dedication. So he's always part of the show. So That's those that are Trans-Siberian Orchestra fans probably are in the know about that. But maybe not some others. Um, so we're capo one, obviously, and no microphone stand. So people often ask about this in pictures because they think I've got some kind of weird tuners happening. But uh, if you get enough throwaway picks on this gig, which is a huge part of it, sure. I think it's fan interaction with this and visual is yeah. like really, really super, super important to keep people visually entertained and right. engaged. So uh, I do lots of throwaway picks during yeah. the show. Galen knows he's constantly restocking. So what do we got next, sir? Hey, speaking of picks, what? sort of picks do you play? Uh, well, a Star Access is my endorsement, and yeah. so I use them pretty much uh, for any of the acoustic stuff. Uh, and the stainless steel, they're picks for uh, any of the heavy stuff. Okay. So I usually, in my back pocket, just have a stainless steel and then a celluloid. Yeah. And I'll just go back and forth, depending on celluloid if I'm playing for acoustic. acoustic and, okay. Wow. Yes. 
Yeah, did I say celluloid first? I hope I did. Oh, maybe, no, 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 no. Yeah, maybe no, edit yeah, that yeah. out. No, uh, no, totally got it. Uh, I might have misspoke. One thing I should mention, actually, a very important part of this gig is we, you either have to, with TSO, part of the philosophy is we've got eight shows a week out here, so you have to preserve the singer's wow, voices. Right. Uh, so there's no on-stage amplifier. So you've got a choice. You can go with ISO boxes or modeling. And yeah. I've chosen to go with modeling and I'm using the, the Fractal Aspects 2, which I'm sure we'll get to a bit later. But yeah. due to that uh, and wanting to have sustain available to me at any time, a lot of these guitars uh, have sustainers um, installed. Oh, really? Uh, and so, well, maybe not like 100% optimum for like the purest tone if you're going to play through like boutique gear. Sure. Uh, I find them an invaluable tool on TSO. Oh, I bet. And it also frees up your hands to engage with the audience to be able to gesture and sure. have fun yeah. so um, they're really a, a huge Galen can speak to it I mean we, we have there's times where the power cords will just die out when you want them to hold for another whatever three four bars and and the, the sustainers are just an amazing tool and I've learned to really find the moments to go up the octave when you want to hear this stuff yeah. the feedback kind of blend in up an octave so a lot of these guitars have sustainers you'll find was that something you used prior to this gig at all yes uh, I had the Broadway gig uh, at Rock of Ages well, so, which right. was, yeah. that was really my first kind of like you have to use modeling yeah uh, and not getting any throw from a cabinet and not getting any natural Can't sustain. Can't lean back and, yeah. I mean, to me, if you're going to go with the ISO box thing, it's it almost gets to the point where the modeling thing plus a sustainer, to me, uh, emulates more of the true thing. As, sure. as much of a, I guess, fake tone in a way it is, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, but it, it sounds more real and is more conducive to getting those even order harmonics and overtones. Yeah. And so that, that totally makes sense. Yeah. That's a great tip. Anyway, moving forward, yeah, here's the one all you guys are going to cringe at and oh, give me lots of hate, wow. uh, but I love it. I think it's <laughs> awesome. I know it's the Star Trek emblem. It, everybody bags on this and everybody knows it's a Roswell Rhodes <laughs> ripoff, but I, I really dig it. I think it's a cool guitar and perfect for this TSO thing. You can see that it's all glitter on the back and a mirror pickguard on the front. And, uh, you know, this guitar plays and sounds really great. It's Has Gibson, a, I've not seen this model before. Is it a brand new, is this a prototype? What or? year was this out? Do you it recall? Was, that came out last year. It was, a, I think, a NAM special. Is that really it? Yeah. But they only made, what did they make? The, yeah, there's oh, really? like barely, there's barely any of them. Wow. And I thought, well, I'll be one of the guys. And yeah. I took a lot of heat online for it. But, you know, sometimes you just got to roll with your gut. I dig it. I think it's right for the yeah. show. Oh, yeah, I love it. Uh, it's a lot of fun to look at. Yeah, right. It's supposed to be fun. Uh, another kind of rarely seen uh, guitar, the 50th anniversary Flying V with the alternate Gibson logo and the Steinberger tuners. So, uh, once again... Most of these guitars, I could probably be just playing the Les Paul or something, sure. but the more I present to people uh, to keep the show visually entertaining. Yeah. Uh, another really cool thing about this show, it's unlike any other rock gig or pop gig, is we're actually encouraged to go out into the audience on certain songs and oh, cool. uh, play. It's a, it's a family show. We sure. have kids here, so yeah. I can actually go out and play these guitars for kids and yeah. get them inspired to actually begin playing the instrument, which is one of the the pluses of the gig for me. It totally. actually makes me feel good. I know that's cheesy. No, I, but, just, um, that's, I love that. I've gotten, I, like, literally, probably over the years of doing this, the 10 years, about 50 emails of you've either made my kid want to start playing guitar or you've furthered their interest in it and they're practicing like crazy. And some of them are going to take my gig <laughs> now. I mean, they're getting, like, really good. So after 10 years. Uh, so next up, some very ambitious gentlemen that have made a guitar for me for every gig that I do or have done pretty much are these gentlemen at Atomic Guitar Works. They're in the, on the Phoenix area. And uh, they made this Explorer for me. It's got the perfect TSO white and black uh, look from the stage. Again, how, this one has a sustainer, you can see. So um, it gets, it gets, it's had some good use over the years. Um, mainly a good like rhythm sounding guitar for me. Yeah. I dig the, the power chord thing on this quite a bit more than I do the, uh, the leads. But um, awesome acts. Moving on. Shout out to Phil Collin. Phil, what's right. up, yo? Uh, <laughs> Phil was cool enough to get me hooked up with this PC1 uh, oh, years right. ago, uh, along with Mike Tempesta at Jackson. Uh, and I've had it upgraded with FU Tone parts uh, for what it's worth. 
so we don't have any degradation of these parts over as time goes by on the sure. Floyd. Again, a guitar with a sustainer. People have seen me with this guitar a lot and all the share stuff. All the step yeah. out stuff I did with share, this was the guitar that was like visual on that gig, even though that was a lot like this where I played a lot of guitars, but the songs I would step out with her or do the step out solo on my own, I was on this guitar. So this has really evolved into a, like a guitar that I use quite a bit. It's got the best single coil sound in the middle position of anything I have out here. So on any of the clean stuff, I pretty much have this guitar as my main axe. And the sustainer on this one in particular works better for me than the other ones for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. So. Great, love it. Okay, now we're getting crazy and everybody's oh. gonna know. <laughs> but we got a, we got a, what is, what's the model now? JSCR1, right? JSCR1. So they were cool enough. Uh, Steve Vai actually helped me uh, get hooked up with this. Oh, oddly really? enough, a bit of email uh, buddies with Steve, and uh, he was able to. Then help. I'm surprised you didn't end up with the gem. Then. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, I, I wondered if he was offended, but I think <laughs> I, I explained to him. I thought that visually, oh, this guitar is perfect. We have lasers, a huge laser show with TSO. So yeah. we've got something chrome that's reflective of all the lighting and lasers, and it has a uh, sustainer. So made it more of a natural fit again yeah. for TSO more than a gem in my opinion. No offense, Steve. Love yeah. you. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, what, what to say about this? Upgraded with the Effutone parts. So ready to rock and um, staying in tune, fantastic, all that great stuff. And earlier you're saying that you, you use two tunings. So standard and... Yeah, we've got one guitar that's Capo One, the Friedman, okay. and in the song we're using it on this year. And then we have a down a whole two, step. Yeah, two acoustics that are, that are tuned down a whole step. Okay, two acoustics down. And then one is even a drop, drop what would be basically drop C, because okay. we're down a whole step across the board and then the low E down Ooh, that's whole step. low and rumbly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's a, all of the TSO stuff, really, Al Petrelli is a big fan of keeping his acoustics down a whole step. So on the record, um, most of the stuff is cut that way by Al. Oh. Wow. And so when you go to replicate it, obviously that becomes the, the, the norm. Sure. Any um, uh, intonation issues when you were, when you were setting them up well, like that? Thank God Galen is an awesome <laughs> yeah. tech. Cause I actually were saying, or I was saying earlier that it's really been a phenomenal run for that. And, huh. and I guess as much of a pain in the butt as it is for Galen, me bringing out 12 guitars yeah. or having 12 guitars um, available to me on this, he's just... He's able to give me a new guitar every song or two, so we've, we're always in tune. Yeah, that's great. It's not, not getting beat up out there. I'm not fighting with it for six, seven songs at a, sure. at a clip. Um, anyway, another kind of rarely seen guitar, uh, an odd choice for TSO, but uh, is the Howard Roberts uh, guitar that I acquired years ago, back when I lived in the Chicago area. Uh, what to say about it? Mm, geez, this is the one we're using that's, that's down a drop hole. C. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the, the drop C. Um, so it's got a nice big fat sound. Um, probably the heaviest song that we're playing in the show this year, Sabotage's really? Handful of Rain, which is wow. basically, you know, the, the original material that this band was founded yeah. upon. Uh, but this is a really awesome sounding guitar. I, it's my version of a 335, like in my collection. I don't own a 335, but the Howard Roberts has always cut it for me. Do you remember when the swing revival happened, oh, when everybody yeah. was doing that? So I was that. in the Chicago uh, scene at the time, and, and I was asked to sub in a band for that. And I was and like, man, was... I need something. So <laughs> I got, I ended up getting this guitar and doing all those gigs. And But I'll tell you what, it's, it's a really fantastic sounding guitar. Um, and I lo it's a very valuable part of my collection. You know, let's talk strings for a second. So yeah. when you've got that drop down, first of all, what, what brand do you use? Ernie Ball. Ernie Ball. I finally get to say it. I know they always say, <laughs> no one knows what strings you use. Ernie Ball. Thank Ernie. you, Ernie Ball. They've been amazing to me. I've been with them the whole time, every yeah. gig, which when you think about Rock of Ages, I oh. was doing eight a week for six years, wow. eight shows a week. So, and teching my own gear, thank you very much yeah. at that time right. on that gig. Yeah. Uh, but... They've been incredibly kind to me. So big shout out to the folks at Ernie Ball. Thank you so much, guys. So what gauge do you use on a drop C? Actually, so 11 through 48 across the board, power slinkies. Okay. Yeah, that's just how I've rolled pretty much my whole career. I find that if I use a 10 on the high E, I break it. Wow. So and regardless of the tuning, you're still yeah, running 11? No matter what, guitar or wow. anything. I just always... And, and I guess I've always been, in a way, a little lazy in that regard. Like, if it's a Strat or a Les Paul, I know that the, the, the 
uh, scale of the neck changes. I understand that, mm -hmm. and I understand you have to have a different touch. And but I've always just been a. It's like one of those. I'm not one of those guys that swaps out pickups and that kind of thing either. Yeah. Like I'm like I buy the guitar. If I like it, I keep it. If I don't, I get right. rid of it. I'm one of those guys. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, anyway. That's cool. Yeah. I would. I, that would be. Ele I mean, running elevens. That's a. Um, that's a lot of work. I mean, yeah, I bet your hand game, well, you're always playing, so... I mean, I'm a, for the most part, on shorter scale guitars. Yeah. The Gibson thing, especially with White Sync, I mean, we're down a whole step on that gig. Oh, nothing. okay. Yeah. I feel like I'm playing on nine. Sure, yeah. Like, I gotta be really careful with my bending, in fact. When I go back and forth between, oh, I bet. say, this gig and White Sync, I need to practice in that tuning for a while, otherwise yeah. my bends are all yeah. over the map for a yeah, while. Yeah, a whole different so, feel. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Especially in uh, in ears, we should mention, I guess, right? Because yeah. that's well, yeah. that can really mess with you with uh, pitch on bends. I oh, find yeah. there's times I think I'm dead on, and when I hear it back on YouTube, I sound like, oh my god, <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> it's it's funny how in ears can be really deceptive. The, mm -hmm. Just the delay and things like that. Oh when, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I go with ultimate ears. I've ultimate been with them ears. for a long yeah. time, and I've tried other brands that were more hyped and. Uh, more hi-fi, but I find that the UE7s are just like, that has that mid-range thing that guitar players want to hear. Sure. And uh, yeah, it sounds the best when you crank my guitar up in them. Uh, so this is actually a production-owned guitar. They own the Chets. Our founder, Paul O'Neill, and Al Petrelli are both big fans of the Chet Atkins guitar. And uh, it's played twice during the show, hence the two different tunings. We have this one here on the walk-up stand, uh, which we play in standard. And then in the second half of the show, I play a, uh, a song with a singer uh, just by myself out there that's uh, down a whole step. Yeah. Um, but these are great, obviously fantastic if you got to blow some chops on an acoustic gig too, because sure. of the thin body and right. access. And, but wonderful guitars. And they've also uh, brought, this is also a production owned guitar. Uh, this Martin 16 GT, our founder Paul O'Neill was in love with Martins, like just that was his thing. So traditionally, I'm a Taylor guy. Like that's yeah. always been my brand. And so, as much as they'll probably hate me for having this <laughs> out here in the, yeah, because they've always been super cool to me. I love Taylors, but honestly, this is a great sounding guitar. And Paul is always a big fan of it. And when you work with TSO or for TSO, it's it's better to to, to do what's oh, right for for, for TSO in the big picture. And and I'm sure Taylor will forgive forgive me yeah. for two months of the year. Yeah, I mean that's uh, it. I mean it's is a professional musician it's like the customer is always right you really have to do what what production at the says. end of the day yeah. the truth is that these companies all make good instruments yeah they do so yeah. otherwise they wouldn't be martin and taylor yeah right? yeah so, yeah exactly uh, yeah. but anyway that's what i've been using uh for a piece in the front half that again i'm out there solo for nine minutes uh yeah. with a singer playing a finger picking piece wow. so uh no pressure in nashville yeah. tonight right yeah, yeah right right <laughs> there hand, won't be hand any guitar, boy players. guitar players out in the audience yeah. that's right i'll tell you right now in advance i'm not good so <laughs> it's all right let's just cut to the chase <laughs> Uh, I wish I wish people could hear you right now, because man, you, I love your playing. Yeah, great. Uh, you sound thank sound you so great. Much, man. Hey, what it. wireless units do you use? So we're using the Shure uh, UR four Ds, which okay. eventually we're going to have to move over to the Axiants, I think. But Galen was saying earlier they've been a real blessing because he hasn't had to chase frequencies often, and really they're as much as they're starting to become something that is a little dangerous they're really still quite safe we, we've we've had zero issues we've That's had great. zero drops on this entire tour through all of these crazy arenas and well um, hey galen come up here a little bit let's kind of take us through i want to hear so do you have a uh is there a controller on stage as well or is galen doing all this all the nope, changes i've for got you? i've got everything joel gets to just play oh, that great Awesome. Was um, that tough to give up control of your controls? No way! Are you kidding? It's the greatest thing ever. Everybody should be so lucky, right? So, like, when you want more delay or whatever, he just the best it. thing on share is that we have it all on MIDI, so nobody's doing it. Oh, really? I mean, you're just all the patch changes are just off the box. Wow. So, so everything, every song is is the same length every night, and and, and correct. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. it's. Fa Tight absolutely show. fantastic when yeah. you don't have to do your own pedal presses. <laughs> and that's when half the clams happen, right? When you're trying to concentrate on, oh no, I got to wiggle my foot over and press yeah, that right. pedal on. And that's when you're, oh, yeah. I just slipped up a half a step or whatever. Yeah, right. No, no, we're, we're, it's such a big deck here yeah. that we're all over the place. Those that haven't seen the show, our stage is the width of the arena, essentially, seat to seat. Wow. It's, it's a massive deck. And although I do kind of have a home position, 
I'm rarely there. Like I wouldn't be able to press my own pedals. So I think Chris has a controller out there and does his some of the time, but immediately upon coming into this, I was like, I think I'll let this be somebody else's responsibility. And, great. Oh, great. oh, and people are hearing our yeah. Tesla machine. So it begins. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the drama, that's great. It's, so yeah, those that are hearing that and wonder what that is, we have essentially a couple Tesla coils firing at a ball. Literally, I guess it's light. What is? What are they? What are they called? Lightning bolts? It's, it is it's electricity. It's electricity. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. And wow. it's synced to MIDI, so it plays along with the band. Wow. Which is pretty cool. Nice little yeah. uh, so addition. If you, if you walk in front of that, what's going to happen? Uh, you don't want to walk in front of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. There have been a couple crazy gear things due to it this year because it draws a lot of power. But thankfully over here, Galen said, I think because we're so old school with the, the ground control that we use for changing patches. And I think we're a little Tesla proof. Yeah, the, uh, Tesla proof. And yeah. you're running the uh, Furman uh, voltage regulator. <coughs> so kind of take me sure. through the whole the whole rig. You've got two axe effects, one's... Sure, uh, one, one's just a, a spare, just in, case, uh, just in case one goes down. So we're using basically... Uh, through the, through the set list, we'll bounce back and forth, guitar changes between channels one and two. Three's a spare, the acoustics all come on four. So the three electrics will go through the switcher um, and then to, into the axe effects and then straight out, straight out to the board. I do, um, we've got the, the bank set up for, uh, you know, for all the different songs of the set list and, you know, dry uh, with effects, lead, clean, depending on what's in the song. And, uh, yeah, essentially with the, the rhythm patch, and then we'll have a specialty, which usually is just a little bit of delay on the rhythm or there, if there's a specialty sound in the yeah. song. Yeah. Lead patch and then a clean. And then we'll, Galen will set it to the BPMs of each song so the delays are in time. And, and you just yeah. tap tempo as you go? No, or? we'll go through uh, during rehearsal. We do about three weeks of rehearsal, so we've got lots of time to, to kind of nitpick and, and go through and you know program the tempos because they're everything's midi and time code yeah. so everything stays really consistent so it's easy to you know just get it set and you know, just call it up when it's time to call it up yeah so great it's easy and after you know after after those many rehearsals of going through song after song it kind of becomes muscle memory of oh okay I mean, I, every once in a while there's a joe will look over and go hey number one like, oh yeah. yeah number one here <laughs> But, but for the most part, it's a, it's a pretty simple uh, Yeah, but that's happened, yeah. like, we're, t we're 24 shows in or something like that, and it's happened once. once yeah. Wow. yeah. So Galen's really remark, especially, I think when you, you first come in on this gig as a tech, it's really challenging, right? Because sure. all of a sudden it's, it's like, oh, gosh, I don't, if you don't know the material, oh, yeah. like, oh, man, I've got to do some shedding here to get this straight. And right. But, man, yeah. now he's been here a while this now. Is, this is year four for me. Yeah. So okay. There's so, some, some familiar. I'm getting warmed up now. I, sure. I'm a, it's always my first question when they call me to do the gig. I'm like, Galen's there, right? Because yeah. it's it really helps to have that, uh, right. I guess, that we, continuity yeah. Is, yeah. would be the, yeah, the term. We've definitely developed a, we know what to expect from each other, you know, to, to make things happen. So, so it's, did, it's a good gig. did it take you a while to kind of dial in your tones for this, for this gig, kind of find the right sounds for it? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's like dial up a cool, like hard rock crunch tone that yeah. uh, it has to be saturated enough to get sustain and be like metal. It has yeah. to be metal. Like you yeah. can't, can't just roll with like a, hey, a nice broken up tone or anything yeah. like that. It's the wrong gig. Yeah. Um, and the lead just has uh, like less gate on it because it's usually coming in like you know, when the band is in yeah. and uh, just lots of delay and verb and yeah, sure. I, it's it's just really very similar. All the sounds are really super similar. Like I said, we pretty much just changed the BPMs, and it's nice to have a bank though for each set of songs if there is something sure. that develops along the way. Yeah. Well, great. Well, hey, thanks so much for joining us. It's been a, thank you been so a much, blast. man. Yeah. Totally an honor. Oh yeah, absolutely. Galen, yeah. pleasure, man. Thanks, great. Sir. Okay, let's go talk to your partner in crime. All right, awesome. Okay, now I'm with. Chris Caffrey of Trans Siberian. Chris, thanks so much for joining oh, us. Oh, it's man. great to be here. It's, it's funny, this is our 21st year on the road since I've been doing it the very, very beginning. It's the first time I've ever actually sat down and gone over what it is that I'm using. So, you know what is kind of funny? Some of the stuff I probably forgot that I have. So, we'll, I'll be teaching myself as we get into my own rig today. <laughs> well, let's start with this very cool V. What's the story on this? Well, this is the first guitar I come out with on the night, and this is a metallic green. It's, it's out of, this was 92, and it's funny because my my friend of mine 
had bought this V and an Explorer 25 years ago at a guitar store in Rochester. I think it was a house of guitars. Is that Ithaca or Rochester? Uh, it's yeah. New York State. I know what you mean. So yeah. he was clearing out his storage and said, I want to sell the V and the Explorer. And this is at the beginning of October. And I hadn't really chosen which guitars I was going to bring for sure. And I went and picked these up because I loved these two guitars that he had. And this and the Explorer, they're, they are, they're 92s. And I, I just use this right at the beginning of the set. And uh, you'll see as we come through is the second guitar I'm using. I actually went online just kind of exploring to see what the guitars were worth money-wise. Because right, right. I told somebody what I'd got them for. He's like, no way, that guitar's worth 10 times more. I'm like, really? So I was trying <laughs> to just see if I was right or wrong right. on that. And I saw an SG that it was the same. So they're all three of these are the same color, the, the V and Explorer 92 in that metallic green and the, and the um, SG is a 93 and they're just all the same exact pick guards and it's fun. So this is, it's all stock right now because I've only had this guitar for, for two months so I haven't really even had a chance to say, okay, I want to try anything else, but it sounds great just the way it is, which a lot of my Gibsons do. I've gotten a lot of older Gibsons and sometimes I don't need to change things. If I do, I have a tendency to put in um, a Seymour, the uh, J, the Jeff Beck one. I like the yeah. JB's tone sure. for a lot of the things. So a lot of the guitars that I have that have changed picked up will go to that one. But for the most part, this is you know just a stock Gibson from that from that year. Great, love it. And it's got yeah. had its first uh, first flight with TSO this year. So <laughs> that's the first one. And then this is the the SG that I found. And this guitar was oh, pretty much it. mint too. I mean, when I got them out, this didn't even have any scratches on the back of it. So I had a chance to. Um, to uh, get this one out on the stage, and they're just really, really great guitars. So, yeah, and this one is stocked the same way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's it's awesome. Great, love it. Now this guitar, there was a year when I had actually went and taken some guitars from Dean, and that's when Dean himself, Zelinsky, was still at the Dean Company. Sure. That he had made me what is you're going to see this guitar. It's called the Night Castle, and there was another guitar that I had from Dean then. But as he moved over to his he had uh dbz guitars yeah he'd made me one of the guitars we have in there and he also when he went to Zelinsky, he made me two of these tso tiger guitars which have that laser engraving oh, and this is cool. you know a design that paul and he really loved of that tiger and, and i put it on the guitar there and and on the back it has the next where he has that uh oh, that glide great. on the back of it and it has my name and i actually had um these were made i had a couple made for paul's for Paul's daughter and, oh, that's and stuff. Great. So it's a, it's a it's a great guitar. I just I use this in the uh, first snow song with the lasers because it kind of glows out and more of the black lighting. You know yeah. that that eighty uh, that's the the purple color and in, in the light trusses it it just kind of brings that one out. But it's just a really great Strat sound and you know that I would go with the uh, you know the Dave Murray Maiden kind of sure. you know humbucker Strat kind of style. Did that neck. Uh, was it a little bit of an adjustment, just the texture of that? Yeah, you know, it it, it all depends on uh, what I'm playing, you know, and also when you're standing. I think some of that yeah. stuff might be in, in the height of where you're wearing a guitar where you notice some of that. And I'm oh. not a big finish on the neck kind of person, and that one doesn't have anything. Right. So it is, even with all that on there, it's smooth, but it will hold your hand when you want it to. Because hmm. there are guitars that I have where I've gotten out with Sabotage, I, I was using that metal guitar pick all the time because that's what Crystal Lee was using. I would scrape down the neck on older guitars because some of those guitars when they got into some really hot clubs or venues would right. get sticky. Yeah. So I would scratch it off so my hands didn't actually stick. Right. But And speaking of sabotage, this guitar was one that I'd gotten for the Poets and Mad Men tour. It was, uh, oh, that's great. was one of the first Jacksons I'd gotten since the Gutter Ballet tour out of Jackson. And, and this guitar has been great. It, so is one of my favorite sounding and playing guitars I've ever owned. So what year did you get this? This one I had gotten in, I believe it was 2000, 2001. Oh, wow. And it went on the Poets and Mad Men tour for, for Sabotage. And I brought it out here with TSO. It was actually funny because there was, at one point I had had a Santa Claus on this guitar. And some of the people knew about it, but it got scraped off. And this was the one that was called the Jackson, the Santa one. But um, my... My last guitar tech had changed a lot of the wiring in it and the sound and tone changed a bit and we, me and Freddie here, we brought it back to pretty much where it was in stock and you now it's just got the EVH on it because sometimes I need the detune but this guitar all around is probably one of the best playing and sounding guitars I own, not just the ones I bring on this tour. It's, oh, a, it's a really, really great guitar and it's, it's just cool looking. It's, you know, it's, it's a road, you can't, can't go wrong with that. <laughs> right, right. Now this is 
another guitar that is funny because in the last 30 years I've probably I've gotten so many guitars from companies and, sure. and other ones but there wasn't really a lot of years where I actually bought guitars but in yeah. this this year I bought so many different ones and this is one of the ones I bought it's a Lukather guitar oh, and, and I got this because I was going to be doing a, um, an acoustic record of the old Toto songs with, with Kimball and my record company for my solo stuff in Germany was hooking that up so I was playing along with all the Toto things and Lucas is such a great player oh, and he's amazing. I actually wanted to go to a music store and see if I could find a piano book to add some things into some of the arrangements acoustically on the guitars and they didn't have them but they had this sitting in the guitar thing and I was watching some of Steve's videos online because he does a lot of his instructional things for his yeah. own stuff which is something we never when I was a kid you never had people teaching you how to play right. we, we I learned every song wrong <laughs> it was like nowadays everybody shows you how to play it but I just played this in the store and I love this guitar as far as the size of the neck I don't have the largest hands in the world this guitar is one of the most fun guitars I have to play and it's it's active and it's just got the the way he made this tremolo where it's really smooth and easy and it rolls and this is just a fun one so I use this for a song out here just because I wanted to bring it out and get it on the stage because of how much I love the guitar it's something a little bit different too so and it was actually a, <laughs> up until a month ago was the only new guitar I'd planned for the tour until those Gibsons appeared out of nowhere this Gibson was one that I got before the very first Beethoven's last night tour we did oh very cool and it's a honey burst one and I got a honey burst Les Paul because we did a show we had a lot of special guests and we had Joe Walsh doing one of our Christmas the winter tours oh, and he came cool. and he had a honey burst last fall and I never saw one up close and I asked his tech I'm like what exactly is the color when he told me it was the honey burst I just love this particular color of a Les Paul and um, I'm gonna get the guitar behind your back next to tell your story because I showed this to Paul O'Neill before we were gonna start the Beethoven tour and of course with Joel was just talking about Paul's love for black Les Pauls he was like well I wish it was black <laughs> and I said to him well Paul Al's using a black Les Paul. I wanted to get something a little bit different. He was just like, oh. And I said to him that we were in Cincinnati about to play the first show the next day. I said, well, if I find a black V, will you get it for me? And I asked him, because Paul was, he was like <laughs> my father, basically. I've worked with him since I was 17. He's like, sure. So I went <laughs> online that night and I found this. I think it's, a, um, it's probably an 89. I think this was an 89, this black V. And it was in... The, there's a music store in, Cle in Cincinnati out by uh, Bogarts around the corner, and I forget the name of it, but this guitar was there. And I jumped in a taxi cab and brought it to Soundcheck for the first Beethoven, for first non-winter TSO tour. And this was one that's very special to me because this was one of the things that was it was a gift from Paul personally. That's but great. all that all came out because I didn't have a black Les Paul, <laughs> and he was like, "No, I want you to have black." And I'm like, "What if I get a black V?" Because I didn't want to have the same guitar sure. Al did. Yeah. And this guitar is one that I'll travel the world with. I mean, this has played European tours I've done with um, with Metal Church and and we're American tours with Metal Church and European stuff with Doro. And it's just like if I have to bring one. I like to bring this one. It's got the D tuner and it goes and it's just, it stays in tune no matter what it's tuning you put stock? on it. still stock? Have you kept This it? is still stock. I okay. haven't changed the thing on this one either. Hey, what it, strings do you run? It really all depends on what the tuning is. I mean, when we're dropping down, Joel was talking about we were going to a whole step down with the C. Yeah. It wasn't heavy enough on tens to go yeah. there. I had to go, where are we up to on that now? 56. No, on the one that's for, uh, the, the real the, uh, the 56. it's 56 is to a, is it 11s or? It's 11, yeah it's 11 to 56 because it wasn't it wasn't low enough yeah. you know it wasn't heavy enough so sure. it, was, it was loosening up what I was playing on guitar yeah so but uh yeah that one I use for the song believe in the set which is actually a, a, a sabotage song that's you know, Paul re-released with TSO. He wrote the lyrics, and it was a very meaningful song. Okay, so this is the Dean Nightcastle guitar, and there was only this, and I think another prototype that was made, and then I had one made for the artist, Greg Hildebrandt, as well. And um, Freddie, you can grab that S. You just grab the uh, the Explorer out, because I just want them to see all the ones that we have, and the, the last two really quickly. So this was the third green. Oh, I love the it. Explorer that came out and this one I played during the one sabotage song and this is the one that has the the low tuning strings in it this was another Dean one that I, it's called the wizard we put a oh. wizard on this and I play the wizards and winter song on it and um, 
I like having this artwork on it. Paul kind of blessed me with being able to have this stuff on my guitars and, yeah. you know, kind of like a, a way to show TSO, but I don't think he wanted all the your guitar, all my guitars to have it. So I don't use these on like the vocal songs or sure. any of the stuff that was concentrating on his lyrics or the stories. I use these for a lot of the instrumentals. Like this was a, a Beethoven guitar. This was a DBZ. Oh, and this cool. guitar is a, actually a great sounding guitar. It's pretty metal looking. It's a, it's a real different one. And I use that for a couple of the songs off the Beethoven's Last Night record that we do in this show. And it's a, uh, it's really light and it's a great looking metal guitar. So I think that's um I think that's all the ones I'm using on this. I think Tell me about your 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 running direct as well. What are you using? I'm using an eleven oh one Digitech unit, which I had actually come in contact with through watching a Queensryche show once oh, and cool. I talked to Michael and he told me what he was using, which I think he switched over to Kemper now, but I used that unit and it just there was something about that one that I thought sounded more like a real amp. Oh. And it has the uh, virtual speaker cabinets in it and when you go out of the XLR on it, it just created to me a sound that sounded like an amplifier and I've yet to um, to put a Kemper into my rig but I've tried some of the other things and I just had have not really loved their sound as much as yeah. I did this and it was actually I have a couple of the older versions of it and when I had a couple of units that were getting kind of sick Digitech was sending me some new ones and they sent me brand new ones and I'm like there's something in this that you did slightly different that is right. not the same so they went out and looked around the world and found me a couple of the original old ones. And Paul always liked it because he thought that the rhythm sound I got out of that sounded like the records. And that's what I always tried to do. Yeah. Is I tried to go to Dave Whitman and say, what is going to sound most like what we did in the studio? You know, and I recorded a lot of records with Dave, so I knew exactly where we were. And that, gets, that sound is just in there. I'll add in a couple pedals into it, yeah. a little bit of a, you know, some chorus or a extra distortions in things just to kick it in the butt and give it, it I, I find it when you add like a little bit of a distortion to the, the pedal to the to the rack mount it gives it an amp kind of thing it's kind of sure. like if you were going into a 900 and you wanted a little bit more of a lead sound you know to make the 900 a 2000 I'm kind of doing the same with that I'm making what would be a 900 in there or 2000 by adding a pedal and I'll do it too with a different one completely like a full tech kind of a thing into the cleans because a lot of those clean sounds I don't think sound round or big through those things. So I'll kind of put a little clean in there that gives it a little bit of a bite. Yeah. And that's kind of like what I like with those. No, I know you got to get up for sound check. Yeah, so we got a sound check for us too. Next time. No, it's great to be out here at yeah. Sea. And this is just showing, I, I always keep my in ears in my jacket. So, first of all, I don't lose them. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's yeah. easy to put on once the guitar's on <laughs> that the, the, the strap doesn't get in the way. But I. Do with some of my sounds too. I'll do some volume pedal stuff from the stage. Oh, you got it. Yeah, Fred, I have a pedal board up there. Yeah. Freddie will change a lot, but Freddie's also teching bass player, the string player, and a, a additional guitar player. So there's points in time where we kind of battle off each other to where I could stand in front of it for a song and do yeah. things, and he could get other things done. And when you know when I got a movie, gets to that. So and I also I'll do things with volume pedals, and every once in a while with a wah up there, and yeah. you know, and if I Sometimes I'll just get the feeling of having a chorus and something and I'll hit it. I like having it there. I don't yeah. like being without the ability to control myself. Sure. So, yeah, but that's that's, don't it. give up all your control. Yeah, exactly. Good. Hey, get the sound check. All right. Really Thank great you. Seeing you. Thanks Until for coming time. out. And we're, we're really looking forward to uh, Nashville tonight. It's been the first time for the East, so and this, right. this place is out of control. I love it. Yeah, here. Well, I, yeah, yeah I haven't show. been here in years and when Sabotage used to come through and I used to play, it was nothing like this. This is really something <laughs> special. And I, I just kept walking down the street watching all the bands. It's a great place to be and I can't wait to play for this place. So. All right, great. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you're here. Till next right. time. Thank you, guys.